So when we talk about building the athlete from the ground up, it's from literally the first thing that hits the ground to the first thing that hits a player, right? The ankle and the foot is the most important thing when it comes to speed training. And it's interesting because it's probably the thing that we train the least. That's Devin Fuller, ran a 4 3 at his pro day. Um, was one of the number one kids coming out of high school. He was a quarterback. The kid could kick it fly. He came to us high 4 5s, ran a 4 3. First thing we did for the first two weeks is just treat his ankle. Now, did I do a lot of other stuff? Yes, but in the beginning, it was all about fixing his ankle because he had a high ankle sprain. And it took him out of play. And it probably dropped his draft stock over the course of his career just because of all the little injuries he had. Now, what's super cool is. If you watched the Super Bowl, he's on the sideline because he went to the Atlanta Falcons. As a rookie, that's a pretty cool experience. But it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't fast. Look at this ankle box right here. You see that? The range of motion you need to make that cut because this is the shin angle that you really want. Whenever you see an athlete move, it's not this top position that matters of where they are standing. It's when they take off or they make a cut and change direction. That is the shin angle that matters. You cannot get an aggressive shin angle if this angle right here doesn't have the range of motion. So the first thing I'm going to tell you guys to do is to stretch. Because if you don't have range of motion in your hips or in your shoulders and you don't prep that, that joint before you load it, what will end up happening is there's a, it, the athlete is going to basically try to work around the range of motion he currently has compensate that movement pattern, and then there goes the ankle. So the first thing that you need to do is stretch it. So the first exercise is basically a range of motion exercise. All I care about is that you're just doing a basic wall calf drill. So here's what I want. If this is the wall, all I want to do is take my knee, and you can do this with every one of your guys, take my knee and then drive it to the wall, keeping my heel on the ground, stretching that ankle box, okay? As the kids, your entire football team, line them up on the wall. Alan, come over. Just face the wire. The entire team, guys, put them up on a wall, put your foot up on the wall, and all he's going to try to do is touch his knee to the wall with keeping his heel down on the ground. That's it. Just like that. Just drive the head back to the wall. Good. So as you can hit it, that's right, let the other room know we're here. Then back the foot up. So in order to get more range, what does he do? He just backs his foot up, right? So all of a sudden, we're getting range of motion in that ankle box. Keep going, back that foot up more. Good. Once it gets hard, right here, right there. So once it gets hard, what do we have to do? Work into it, right? So back that foot up a little bit more, and then try to get in there. If his heel comes off the ground, he's wrong. So what you want to tell your guys, is keep this heel glued to the ground, nailed to the ground, and drive that knee to the wall. Whoever gets the best range probably has the biggest capacity for speed. Pretty simple. It auto-corrects. You don't need an exercise science degree to know that. You really don't. What you need is someone to sit there and say, put your damn feet on the line, right? Drive your knee into the wall. Because if you do that, automatically you're going to get faster. So what am I doing? I am preparing the joint. The second exercise is a basic calf raise. You're going to do calf raises two different ways. You guys all think that this is a bodybuilding exercise, right? How many of you guys don't do calf raises because most of the time you're like, it's a bodybuilding exercise. Nobody wants to do it. What's the first thing that hits the ground when you run? Your feet. If, it's, if the first thing is the weakest link, you're not going to be able to produce energy into the ground, right? So number one, your foot's got to get strong, your ankle's got to have a proper range of motion. But if you don't have stiffness in that ankle in the sense of your calf complex, so the muscle, not the joint, meaning that there's a spring, when you strike the ground, there's going to be an absorption of energy. So what happens is, if I'm not able to absorb that energy because my calf is not strong, just like I would not be able to absorb the bench, right, in an eccentric loading position, because my chest, my lats, my shoulders are not strong, it's the exact same thing when I run. 